Hey, Don here. Uh, I was just uh, looking at the channel and a couple of our buddies, and there was sort of a question or comment question kind of thing on uh, Psalms um, 23, where it gets into uh, verse 21. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from, uh, from the horns of the unicorns. Um, and... Uh, a lot of people wondering, well, what is all this? Well, yeah, it's literal unicorns for sure. Uh, but let's look at, uh, there's a lot of questions about what's even going on in Psalms 22. So let's just look at it real quick. I'm just sitting here on the couch. Uh, so I wrote some notes down real quick. Um, I only spent about five minutes on this. So yeah, this might be a little sloppy, but it's it's pretty simple. Uh, you got Psalms 22, of course, Psalm of David, David writing. But, of course, he's writing in, uh, for Jesus Christ. In most of this, um, you're going to get prophecy of the cross. But I am a worm and no man or reproach of men and despised of the people. Uh, all they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying he trusted in the Lord. He that he would deliver him, let let him deliver him, seeing he delighted him. All this stuff uh, is the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. They pierced my hands and my feet. You know, what is that, duh? Um, <clears throat> and you get up here, let me tell my bones, Jesus Christ on the cross. They part his garments and his vesture on the cross. Um, but... It, if you're familiar with studying your Bible, you know that um, it will fade off into different things. And you just have to really pay attention and know what you're looking at. Um, sometimes there's a dual doctrinal application for sure. But there'll be a main uh, import of what's going on. And you get into uh, verse 19. Uh, but be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. Now, that could be Jesus Christ on the cross, sure. I believe the greater import here is you have Israel in the tribulation, in the last half of the tribulation. There's still seven years to go. It's not 10, it's not 16, it's not three and a half, it's not uh, 92 and three quarters or anything else. Okay, it's, there's seven years to go in the tribulation, and this would be in the last half called the Great Tribulation. And Israel has found out they've been deceived by the Antichrist. All of their uh, efforts to try and be as Gentile as possible, to be as American as possible, to be the, you know, the Hollywood movie stars and doing everything that they can do to be accepted by the Gentiles, they find out by the last half of the tribulation, all of that was for nothing. And they've been deceived, they've been turned on, the world is trying to wipe them out. And they're calling on God saying, hey, uh, where are you at? You know, despite the fact that they've dumped the Lord thousands of years ago, and they literally invented their own religion that they call um, uh, Judaism, which is not Judaism. The Judaism of today is a joke. It's nothing like biblical Judaism. But let's get into this. Be, uh, but be not thou far from me, O Lord, Israel, Oh, my strength, haste thee to help me, obviously. They're being wiped out. Deliver my soul from the sword. Their heads are being cut off. They're being killed. They're being wiped out. And there's armies coming after them. My darling from the power of the dog. Now, what's this, my darling? You see, we tend to just kind of read these and, oh, well, that's kind of poetic. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, and, it, and, it, and it is. It's, it sounds great. Uh, the writing of the King James Bible is beautiful. But there's also import to the wording. What's my darling? I believe that's Israel. That is the Lord's um, darling. I mean, it, it's his cast off wife, which he takes up again. God the Father remarries Israel, takes her back again, even though she was divorced and cast off. Deliver my soul from the sword. My darling, my darling, Israel. From the power of the dog. See, those Gentiles are coming after them. The Gentiles are determined to take out that Jew, to take out Israel. Save me from the lion's mouth, Antichrist. 
uh, the devil manifest in the flesh. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. What's that? That's up in the second, that's a, the second advent getting prepared. And Israel is, is crying out to the Lord. Hey, can you, you need to come save us, save us. We're going to be wiped out here. And the Lord is hearing literally from the horns of the unicorns. That's us, the church. The church is going to come back on white horses, which will be unicorns. Unicorns are not, you know, you've heard from some preachers now trying to establish, they, they're trying to uh, establish themselves as something neat by, by putting out weird stuff, trying to invent stuff. So they'll say, well, no, unicorns are actually, um, they're bulls. Or unicorns are actually these, these, uh, these two-horned uh, oxen. No, a unicorn is a horse. It's a supernatural horse in heaven. We're going to ride them back at the second advent. They're going to be uh, um, an animal of, of great strength. They're physical, supernatural horses like us. We're going to be supernatural, yet at the same time, we're going to be physical. We're going to be unbeatable in a resurrection body. And these will essentially be like, uh, like resurrection horses, if you will. I mean, they're going to be, um, they're not going to be injured or killed when they come back. If they get nailed by artillery or whatever, these suckers are going to keep coming. And Israel is saying, hey, Lord, up there around the horns of the unicorns, why don't you, you know, could you come back and save us? And these horned unicorns with the church mounted on them will come back. And, they, and Israel will be saved. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Here, remember, this is a psalm of David. So here, I believe this is prophecy of David. David will be uh, a ruler again in Israel under Christ, of course. And I will, David, declare thy name Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ and Jehovah God, thy name unto my brethren, the Jews, Israel, in the midst of the congregation. That congregation is always Israel. Uh, and it'll probably be where they congregate the temple. Uh, will I praise thee? Ye that fear the Lord, praise him, all ye seed of Jacob. Hello. Glorify him, millennium. Uh, after second advent, and fear him, all ye, all ye, the seed of Israel, millennium, after second advent, for he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, uh, tribulation, again, Israel in the tribulation, neither hath he hid his face from him, those that look for him, he'll appear the second time without sin and salvation, he comes back, there's a second rapture that takes place where the Jews are caught up that we're doing what they're supposed to do in the tribulation, as well as uh, every eye shall see him, even them that pierced him, amen, second advent. But when he cried unto him, he heard, he came back. Uh, see, all of this, the meek, see that, the meek, tribulation, those, the meek are the ones that get to see him. The meek are the ones that go up in the second rapture. The meek shall eat and be satisfied, they that praise the Lord, that seek him, your heart, see, all this, um, second advent, millennium, he is governor amongst all nations, literally. Then, of course, it comes down here, and you got the uh, the church. Uh, goes right into, see, it, it changes. You got to be on your toes. A seed shall serve him, singular. What's that seed? That, you can cross-reference that to Isaiah 53. Uh, it's um, the church, a generation, see, unto a people that shall be born, second birth, the church. Now, there's some cross-references here. Uh, if you look over at, um, we want Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, Psalms 35, and again, this is David, okay? Um, in Psalms 35, you got... Uh, let's see, 11 and 12. Now see this again? 
now here, here's Jesus Christ. You got the same kind of thing going on as um, in Psalms 22. Same kind of thing. Uh, we're not going to read the whole thing, but um, verse 10, all my bones shall say, Jesus Christ of the cross, um, which delivers the poor, tribulation from him that is too strong for him, the Antichrist, the Gentile dogs, uh, yea, the poor and the needy, tribulation, Jews in the tribulation, from him that spoileth him, Antichrist, false witnesses did rise up, Jesus Christ. Now it's back to Jesus Christ. They laid to my charge. But second, uh, second application here, you got uh, Jews and um, uh, tribulation saints in the tribulation who are going to have false witnesses come up against them. They're going to be killed. They rewarded me evil for good, the spoiling of my soul. Here's um, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Let's see here. How much do I want to... But oh, then it starts going back into um, the Jews in the tribulation again. Same, same, kind of, same kind of thing. It goes back and forth. Um, like, like you get into 17, pretty much 17 to the end of the end of the chapter. Your main import will be Israel in the tribulation, the last half of the tribulation. Lord, how long will thou look on? See that? They're in the last half of the tribulation. They're like, God, where are you? We're your chosen people. We're the Jews. Hello, we're getting wiped out here. Rescue my soul from their destructions. My darling, there it is again. My darling, there's there's Israel. There's that, that wife of Jehovah, that wife of God the Father. She's got to be restored. My darling. Hey, honey, right? Right? Isn't that what? Imagine a divorced woman. She was close with her husband at one time. And here she is. Her life is literally in danger. And there's these 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 dirt bags gonna come try and uh, rape her and kill her and take everything she has. And here's her divorced husband afar off. Um, and she's saying, "Hey, here's your darling over here. I'm gonna. Will you come save me? <laughs> Let's get back together. I, isn't that a fair application? I'm not trying to push things too far. I'm, I'm not trying to get off base here, but I think that's what's going on here." And the Lord does take her back. Imagine how you'd feel if you were the husband and, you know, you unfortunate situation. You wound up getting estranged from your wife, divorced from your wife, but you still loved her. You still cared about her, but she's going to go do what she's going to go do. And then you see this thing taking place where there's this biker gang coming in and they're planning on doing what they're going to do. And you're like, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And... You take out your, you just happen to have a minigun in the back of your pickup truck. And you're like, okay, let's see how this thing goes. And the minigun takes care of the situation. Because if she's got something, if she's got a, uh, a, a, a you-know-what kicking coming, you'll be the one to do it. But they, they better keep their hands off of her. And then you restore your fellowship. I think that's a pretty good preaching application, okay? And um, that's just a preaching application um, don't get too offended by it, but I think that really is a good illustration. Um, I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. Once again, I believe this is David prophetically writing about what he will do in the great congregation within the millennium when he's restored. He's restored as a king under Jesus Christ, and in the and uh, after the millennium, I believe he. Uh, is restored as king over Israel. Um, I will praise thee amongst the people, Jews. When you ever you see, oh, amongst much people, but when you see the, well, we're not going to get into that. I'm going to get off base here. Um, Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me, Israel in the tribulation. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. Now there's Jesus Christ. But it's also Israel, dual doctrinal application. For they speak not peace, but they dis devise deceitful matters. There's that peace agreement that takes place between the Antichrist and the nations and uh, the leaders of Israel, thinking, peace, peace, we finally have peace. Yeah, suckers. 
deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. They think they're quiet in the land. They think they finally got peace through the Antichrist. Eh, wrong. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, aha, aha, or I have seen it. They think they finally got it. That dirty Roman Catholic church finally thinks we've got it. We've got it. It's ours. We finally have it. This thou hast seen, O Lord. Keep not silence. O Lord, be not far from me. They're saying, come back. Stir up thyself. Oh, he will. Like a, like a man that wakes up by reason of wine. Stir up thyself and awaken to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Now, this is a dual application dual application, Jesus Christ and Israel. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to uh, thy righteousness, and let, th let them not rejoice over me, Israel. Let them not say in their hearts, ah, so would it, we have it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up, Jesus Christ, Israel, um, and on and on and on. It's That's what's going on here. Um, and we saw my darling as the cross reference, um, let's see here. And let's look at, um, let's look at Isaiah 34 real quick for a cross reference on these. Um, let's see, Isaiah 34 on these, uh, unicorns. Now you can read Isaiah 34 on your own, but it's second advent. For the indignation of the Lord is come is upon all nations and his fury upon their armies. Remember, I, I was talking about that minigun in the back of the pickup truck, and he's just going to absolutely vaporize them. You don't mess with Israel. You don't mess with his land. His, uh, his cast-off wife is still living in his house. That's his house. He paid for it. You keep your dirty Gentile dog hands off of it and off of my people, or you're going to find out who's the bad you-know-what. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And that's, that's what you're getting here as you're coming down through here. Second Advent, Second Advent. Here we go, verse 7. And the unicorns... Literal, second advent. The unicorns shall come down. Come down from where? Heaven, the third heaven. That's where we'll be. After the rapture, we're caught up to the third heaven. We go up to the clouds. Then Jesus Christ takes us up to the third heaven. We have the judgment seat of Christ. We're made prepared. His bride is made white and ready. Uh, we get all our wrinkles messed, uh, all ironed out. And we're ready to come down. There's no more NIV believers. There's no more New King James believers. No more Pentecostals. Uh, none of that garbage. We're all Bible-believing. Uh, I want to say Baptist, but we'll be beyond that at this point. Um, and the unicorn shall come down with them. And the bullocks with the bulls. There you got your bulls again. And their land shall be soaked with blood, Israel. And their dust made fat with fatness. Uh, and here's your, here's your context for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, second advent and the year of recompenses for, like I said, the controversy of Zion. You're in my house and you're going after my wife. You're going to die. And here we got the, the burning pitch. We got the, uh, the land itself, the dust turning into, you got the, a lake of fire being created right there on the earth, a lake of fire. And you can run cross references to Matthew 25 and Matthew 5 if you ever wondered what those passages were about. They're bound hand and foot and cast into a lake of fire. What, the bottom in the bottom of the universe? No, right there on the earth, man, right there in front of everybody. You wonder why there's going to be a rebellion at the end of the uh, in the last part of the, the millennium. People are going to see their loved ones physically bound hand and foot and cast into a lake of fire. Um, and so that's the crossroads. So that's that's what all of that is about in Psalms 22 and those unicorns there. Those unicorns are horses, I believe white horses, 
with one horn coming out of their head, just like a unicorn, just like you've seen them. It's not an ox. Just, just you hear some bonehead calling them an ox or a bull or something like that. Um, that that is somebody who's just trying to get a name for themselves. All right. Unicorns are unicorns. They're they're horses, just like Doctor Ruckman did. Uh, made it in his artwork. And that's what we're going to be writing when we come back. We're going to come back on horseback. Unicorn horseback. So I didn't plan on going 20 minutes, but I did. So I hope you got something out of it.